your young kids to have a few more games under their belt, or you like the idea of throwing them in right now in a big national game like this? I mean, it always comes at the same time of the year. Um, you know, there really isn't. Um, there isn't. I mean, yeah, you would love to be able to say, well, let's play then when, you know, January, February. But we've got other games in January and February that are going to be similar to this one. So um, the earlier you find out, I've always thought the earlier you find out about your team, about your players, the better off you're going to be, you know. Um, I was talking to one of the coaches today about um, there, for for and this works. This works both for both teams. I think there can be no, there can be no downside to this game after the game's over. Both coaches are going to feel like, well, I thought that was going to happen, something like that, and they're going to feel like I, I didn't know we had that in us. Both coaches, I think, are going to know more about each individual player and their team as a whole by, by Sunday night. And the earlier you can find that out, the better you're going to be. What have you found out through the first half a dozen or so, handful of games for this team? Um, well, we talked about that today, um, that we suspected going into the season that we had a chance to be, you know, um, a really good team. And uh, these first six games, we've been... Um, we've been really good for a lot of stretches of a lot of the games. And we've been not so good in stretches in, in these games. Um, I think if, if our team aspires to be a great team by the end of the season, then um, we've, got, we've got a lot of work to do to become a great team. And uh, I had somebody run into me the other day and said, this is going to be one of the greatest teams you ever coached. You know, and I started laughing. And uh, I said, I don't, I don't know that I've used that word at practice yet. And we're a great team. Our starting five is really good. But I don't think they've played enough basketball together to qualify as a great team. But we're getting better. Uh, we're getting better every day. And that's, that's what you want to be doing at this time of year. You said the other night that the, you expect a big three to play really well when it'll come down to how the other two fare. Are, are, are they ready for this? I mean, do you see signs in them that they can really go out there and contribute? Well, I mean, I think you you, you feel like if you're a basketball player, you know, you want to you wanna play in, in these kind of games, but Everybody thinks that they're ready, and you don't know if you are or not until you play in the game. Um, you know, I went back and watched um, a, a, a large portion of our Final Four game, and Shay and I were talking about that today. Um, we didn't really get great performances from a lot of our starters in that, in that game. Um, you know, other than Azare and Fisa, I don't know that anybody really distinguished themselves in that game. So, even if you've been in that in in a big game, even in this, this and this is certainly not a Final Four game, but even if you've been in big games, you know, that doesn't mean you're going to play great or you're not going to play your best. Or it, I mean, it's, you just play the game, and sometimes, sometimes kids surprise you, and they surprise you by how well they play or how poorly they play. I mean, that's why, that's why you play the game, you know. And I go up to my office every day. I hit my computer. It comes on. I think people in sports are a little different than that. Coach, what do you think of um, Megan's performance over these first six games? She's just like our team, I think, in a lot of ways. Um, she's had some, some great, uh, great moments, you know, where she's um, shown that she can can do a bunch of things really well and she's had moments where I think she's really struggled um, especially defensively you know um, I mean I think if you compare her to where she was last year at this time it's you know, 180 degrees but um, 
Uh, I think Meg would be the first to tell you if she was honest that this is just th- you know scratching the surface of what we expect and what I think she expects from herself. What are you hoping to see from her on Sunday? Well, as with any other of the young players that um, that come into college, um, th- sometimes it's not a game of X's and O's and strategies, you know. Um, sometimes it's just a game where you got to compete. You know, you got to compete. You know what's what's great about playing on the road in college basketball is you're you're gonna you're gonna find out whether you can you, you can compete against all American type players on the road in a big game. And she hasn't been in a lot of those games, so this is kind of a first for her. So I'm anxious to, you know, um, I'm anxious to see how she does. You know, is there a psychology in, I guess, in recent years, you guys have generally been favorites in, in Israeli season games. I mean, looking back at the Tennessee thing, sometimes you were, sometimes you weren't. Mm-hmm. And this year, I think everybody would agree that you're not mm-hmm. going to this game. Is there something to be learned that can be really useful psychology-wise as a coach or a team by by not being a favorite, not defending something. Yeah, I don't know. I think um, I, th- I think the 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 narrative all the time is um, about who's the favorite, who should win, who's expected to win, and what does this you know what does a win mean for the winning team, and what was a loss mean for the losing team. I think the. the if we learned anything over all these games that we've played uh, against, whether it was Tennessee or all these games we played against Notre Dame, is that um, I don't think the rankings mean that much, you know? Um, and, and I don't know that it changes the psychology. Maybe it does for the players. I don't know. I don't, I don't ask them about that stuff. But um, I don't know that you feel more pressure going into a big game on the road if you're number one as, if you're num- as opposed to being number two. Whatever that is, so I don't. I don't think that. I don't think that there's going to be that much of a difference. I think there's probably a bigger issue or a bigger um, psychological whatever for the for the home team who's number one in the country. I think that is different. I think for the team coming in on the road, it really doesn't matter. But I think for, for if you're a team and you're number one in the country and you're defending national champions and you're at home and you got four starters back and all that, that that's a different mindset than if we were going in there and um, you know they they were number one in the country and we were number two and you could say, well, I don't know why they're number one. They don't deserve it. Or if they were number one and they hadn't won a national championship last year. So I, I think... There, there's factors that go into it, but I, I don't, I don't think either coach is probably mentioning any of that, that stuff this time of the year. We're even in the final four. Hell, we played them in the final four one year. They were, we were both. I think it was the first time two undefeated teams have ever played in a national championship game, and that game wasn't close. And you would think, like, how's that happen? Strange things happen. That's Muffet right Sorry. now, probably. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm she wants to what tell you say? I'm full of shit. Yeah, right. <laughs> what do you say? It's all, it's all false. <laughs> Fake news. You know what they can do offensively. What about defensively? Just going against that. Do you see any, you know, areas you can exploit? For uh, going for against Notre Dame. Us, for their defense or our defense? Your offense going. Against oh, our offense defense. against their defense. Well, you know, the. The interesting thing is that they're they're a lot bigger than they were last year. You know, I think having Turner and, and Shepard in the game at the same time, I think they're a lot bigger, and um, uh, that's going to be a challenge for us. Um, you know, you know, Azrae played great against them last year, and you know, I think they have a hard time dealing with her size, but we don't have that. Um, so. We're gonna we're gonna have to shoot the ball really really well. I, I think uh, know that Notre Dame does a pretty good job of not letting you get a lot of stuff in the lane, and you have to make outside shots. 
and that's going to be the case on Sunday. Um, you know, if we shoot the ball really well from the perimeter, then we're going to be we're going to be in great shape. But if we don't, then I think we're going to struggle because I don't know that we can get a lot of buckets in the lane against their size. When you're versing a team with that size, how important is it to have the guards attack the uh, the boards too? <clears throat> well. One of the problems that you have when, when you play a team like Notre Dame, and it's probably the same when people are trying to get ready for us, is that if you're not careful, um, every, time, every time somebody misses a shot against us, they're, they're worried that it's a layup to any other end or a wide open three. Well, it's exactly the same when you're playing against them. You know, if you're playing against them and you send too many guys to the boards and you don't get that rebound, it's a layup at the other end. I mean, they're one of the best teams in the country at getting the ball from foul line to foul line in a hurry and, and getting to the rim. Um, and, you know, it's, it's a challenge because you would love to be able to go in an offensive rebound more, but it's a fine line between how hard to go offensive rebound and make sure that you got enough guys back. It's a delicate balance. Last year against Notre Dame, uh, in the first game at the XL Center, yeah. Megan came in and had a um, mm -hmm. strong game off the bench. Is there any carryover with her confidence into the season, or is that just so far back that it's not really a factor? Yeah, I, I think, you know, she had a great game at UCLA. You know, the fact that we can remember all her great games is not a good sign. Uh, but she's a she's got a different she's got a different mindset. You know, this year she's come in with a different look about her and. Uh, and she's still learning, um, you know, what every other kid learns, that all the stuff that, you know, that, what was that book? Oh, I remember Ward gave it to me a few years ago. It's something to the effect that whatever got you here is not good enough to keep you here. So I think kids learn early on that all the stuff you used to do that made you great, once you get here, that stuff doesn't work as much. And you got to... And, and I think in her mind, she's she's come with a different different mindset. And and I, I'll be honest with you, like if she plays if she plays like great, and Kristen plays great, those two guys, then uh, I, I'm we're gonna be we're gonna be okay. We went up there a couple years ago, and I remember saying, I think we got. I think we got something that they can't handle. We got Kia Nurse, and Kia Nurse, all she knows how to do is put her head down and go to the basket. And sure as hell, we played them up at their place. That's all Kia Nurse did. But it was enough to kind of, you know, change the game for us a little bit. And uh, uh, and and I and I think Kristen and, and Megan are going to be two big keys. You know, as as it usually is in those games, as it usually is. I mean, look at the game we played in the Final Four last year. Going into the game, I don't remember anybody mentioning Jackie Young's name. She was probably the best player on the floor. That's what happens in those games. Can I ask you a question away from the game? Um, I asked Dan also earlier today. Um, when you coach a player and you have like notions, preconceived notions, and as the season goes along, they can fall into your doghouse or not. How long you want to keep them in? Yeah. <laughs> or let them out? Or let them out? <laughs> how? How? Fun. Well, I just want to. All right, Jay. Thank I you. Want, I just want to ask, kind of like your your philosophy on that. You know what? <laughs> I I I always get a kick out of this, Jeff. I always get a kick at somebody go. So and so is in coach's doghouse. You know, whatever coach it is, coach's doghouse. And uh, he's always got somebody in his doghouse, and I laugh. And I go, well, why would a coach take a kid that they know can help you win games, and if you had them on the floor, you would win more games and put them in the so-called doghouse? They wouldn't. No coach in a million years would do that. So the kid's in the doghouse because they decided at some point along the line, you know what? It's a lot easier being in a doghouse than coming out here to practice and busting my ass every single day. Because if a kid is doing that, they're probably not in the doghouse. So at some point during that kid's week, two-week period, they, real, they made a conscious decision. Being in a doghouse, well, at least I ain't getting yelled at anymore. 
I'm not playing anymore either, but at least he's off my back. They, that's, it's, a, it's, it's some place that the kid puts themselves. And I think as a coach, I, I, I struggle with this part. A, 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 a great coach told me one time, a player is only as good as you think they are, which makes a lot of sense because a lot of times when you only see the upside in a kid, that kid tends to give you the upside. And when you see the downside and you only see the bad stuff the kid does, that kid tends to you know, live down to your expectations, I guess. So I think uh, uh, the, the worst thing that a coach can do is, is make a decision on a kid before the kid even plays or before the kid plays themselves into that bad place. And that happens a lot too, for whatever reason. But if a kid can help you win, they're gonna play. At least that's how it is for me. I mean, if there, if you can be rest assured, if there's a kid that's not on the floor at any particular time for long stretches or more than games at a time, We've made a decision that the way it is right now at this moment, this kid can't help us win. That's what you do as a coach. That's it. That's it.